these are extraordinary times and we have a pretty big message coming through so I'm going to get into that but before I do if you want a personal reading session all that information is in the description box so you can check that out I also left a post on my YouTube channel with all the details go on over there and check it out and of course I'm gonna be having lives on the bright live platform so the first one is September 8th we're gonna be talking it's just a hangout okay Spiritual Hangout, we're going to be talking about current events, what the spiritual energy is behind all of this, and we will tune in to a message on what we might need to be prepared for. So there's that one. And then on September 13th, oh gosh, now I'm doubting myself. I think it's September 13th. All the information will be in the description box. We'll be having a session about Archangel Metatron. So do not miss that. Check it out. Get your tickets. Let me tune in. I was feeling the message coming through. But uh, we're, having, um, we're having a hard turn in how we see things, obviously, our perspective. But this is going to look like a lot of continuing to wake up. We've been doing that for forever. But this is really, something's coming up when you see this. This might be something out in the world. Um, this might be something in your personal life, but really what it is, it's what I've been talking about for years, a change in structure, but also a change in what we deem as allowable. So if you look at how things are today, even compared to 10 years ago, if you're old enough to <laughs> have that comparison, even to 10 years ago, things. some people might say, well, we're way too sensitive these days. We'll talk about that. There are certainly people out there using very real societal issues for their own personal gain by playing the victim, trying to get people to feel sorry for them. Um, and we know cluster B personality disordered people will often make up sob stories so that they fit it. And then what ends up happening to people who need help and need attention, they're not getting it. Or we are getting programmed to be defensive when someone has a sob story. So again, when somebody actually does need help, they're getting overlooked. It's, it's a wild problem. It really is. So the first thing to come up, it's something that I have said before. I'm kind of leaning forward because I realize I don't have my chair set right. <laughs> so hi, I'm going to come on in like this so my mic doesn't pull the camera. But it, it is what I've said before and I'll say it again. The only people who are ever going to be bothered with you setting a boundary are toxic people. Healthy people are going to say, okay, okay, thank you for sharing that with me. Okay, I'm glad to know where you stand on that. Or, okay, let's compromise. Let's work it out. They're not going to get angry at you. They're not going to try to make you feel guilty. They're going to respect you. So this is something that we need to lay down. There's also, uh, and has been going on this trend, of hmm, wanting to see into other people's brains without first taking stock of what we're doing, <laughs> right? So always wanting to know what's wrong with someone else. I do tend to get reading requests from people. Sometimes they're concerned parents. But in the past, I haven't recently for, for this bigger one. In the past, I have had people come in and want me to basically dive into the soul of their son, daughter, um, their child to see what they're doing. Are they going to marry that girl? Are they going to? Whoa. And as this person is talking, you can tell there's so many things that that parent needs to work on, but they can do no wrong. They don't think they're the problem. Or someone who's getting a divorce and they make their... Um, soon to be ex-spouse seem like the villain and they don't want to look at their own stuff. Now, there are sensitive people out there, a lot of empaths, if you have experienced abuse in your life or if you have experienced trauma, most have, um, you know, there's an argument about, you know, it's sort of a chicken and the egg argument, what comes first, the empath nature or do they become that through the abuse, you know, are they really sensitive? Are they just hyper vigilant? You know, these sorts of things. But um, the fact of the matter is, is when you recover from that, you can go through a time of letting the anger out, 
of taking what's yours. So you start to almost look like a narcissist, right? Or being arrogant and trying to overcompensate because your walls are up so high. You don't want anybody else to hurt you. You see everyone and everything as a potential danger sometimes. So that can have us acting out in a way that's not authentic to who we are. And if we're not willing to look at that, if we're too desperate to know what's going on with someone else, you're not working on you. We have to talk about, we've got to come back to the enablers. Um, and I know I'm not playing into that anymore. Uh, I mean, I could go into a really, really <laughs> big discussion about this because especially with social media, if you're, if you're a content creator, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You may have started a social media brand because you were trying to get away from a boss or trying to get out of a structured nine to five kind of day. And then you realize every viewer is ever threatening you with a subscribe or an unsubscribe or playing the victim like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't support you. I can't do this. I can't. And sometimes it's like, okay, like you can't even hit the thumbs up. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there is this control mechanism and I'm usually one of the, not one of the first people, there are other people out there who are saying this stuff, but those of us who are out there um, noticing things and speaking about them, we do get kicked around. That's not me being a victim, it happens. So as soon as I say stuff like this, the subscriber count is gonna go down and that's fine with me. I don't even care about this. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't care about, you know, catering to everybody's whim and will um, and, and playing the power games. That's just one example of this message is coming through the power. Um, people not wanting to admit when they're wrong, not wanting to see the things that they need to heal, um, enablers just feeling sorry for everybody because they think that that makes them a good person. Uh, watch out for vulnerable narcissists or you know covert narcissists, the ones who um, intentionally uh, take something, a situation and twist it so that you have to fawn all over them. These kinds of things. Now, this spiritual community is filled uh, with covert narcissists and overt narcissists and sociopaths and the whole bit. Any, any profession or any kind of field for that matter that involves someone having some power over someone else, you're gonna get those types because they wanna feed. So there's that, um, there's that part. But the enablers, the ones that are like, oh no, you're being, you're being too hard on them. You're part of the problem. And we have this, this message coming through that it's only going to get worse. Oh yes. Earthquakes, floods, hurricanes. Although we, so far we've had a quiet hurricane season, knock on wood. <laughs> but, um, you know, things like that are going to keep erupting. All right. Um, natural disasters happening. That's why I was working with Archangel Uriel and had Archangel, I had a session about Archangel Uriel on the Bright Platform. And, you know, he handles natural disasters. You can work with any archangel on any of that. Just whoever you're most comfortable with, call on them and they'll help you out. But, you know, this was definitely something that needed to be addressed because our collective energy is playing out in the world. Whether you believe in that or not, listen, hey, yo, it's just how the message is coming through me right now as a human being. If I kick over to the other side and I got more info, I'll let you know. I'll haunt you. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hopefully I'll move on. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's just this, we're in a very sick time and, and we were designed and souls have incarnated to help ease the ill. And it has gotten messed up. It has gotten so messed up. We are in very, very troubling times. And again, that's very easy for everyone to point their finger and say, well, it's people who act like that. And I've done that myself. I've gone through narcissistic abuse, so it's very easy for me to point the finger at cluster B types and say, you're the evil in the world. It's because of you, right? But that's, that's not it. That's not the only thing, <laughs> right? Um, it's abuse patterns being passed down generation after generation. Um, people wanting to just hide out because they don't want to get involved. They don't want to make waves. And that's okay. If you're not good at making waves, then get out of the way. Because the wave is coming, honey. The, the waves are about to crash on the shore. If you can't swim, get to high, high ground because here we come, right? So let's 
be careful. Let's be careful with playing the victim or allowing other people to play the victim. Get more information. Make sure they actually have had something going on before we go fawning over them. If someone is just coming at you and flipping the script, just again to make themselves seem like the victim, get more information. Now this goes the other way too. Now I've been very guilty of jumping to conclusions about people again because of my own pain and my own fears and wanting to protect myself. So with men, <laughs> I know guys, I'm sorry, but I have a defense about men where I'm like, no, I've been mistreated too many times. What are you doing? What, what's that? And no, I am not one of those that wastes my time checking anybody's phones. I think that is crazy. I said it, I'll say it again, I think it's insane. If you're needing to check someone's phone, you need to be out of that situation. No, no, okay? I don't care, you, you can leave a nasty comments. I don't, I really don't care. I'm so tired of feeling like I have to cater to um, the toxic people. I'm just tired of it. So I hope you'll get tired with me and finally stand up, <laughs> right? So there's that, but looking at that and checking ourselves too where, you know, we get stuck on a situation and we want to make ourselves a victim. So what I was saying about, you know, um, jumping to conclusions about men, just assuming they're going to hurt me or just assuming they have ill intent. And so shutting myself down from that and avoiding, that's something I need to work on. So, or, you know, if you were raised to think that any people are to blame for how you feel, examine it give it some examination. And as I said before, there are people who are using, you know, very serious situations that we really need to work on because people are suffering. And they have, I don't know what it is. They're unhinged and they're hiding and they're calling attention away from the people who really need help. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Again, I hope you won't do the, um, you know, let's just rise above and let's just avoid and let's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And you can't wait until something's affecting you directly before you stand up and, and do something about it. So there's that. Um, this is a warning that has come to us many, 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 many times and yet in this line of work I do. <laughs> I keep seeing it. And if you look, let's just take social media again. I don't know, this is what I do. So it's fresh. That's a fresh example for me. But I've seen so many creators who are doing good, authentic work and have been doing this for over 10 years, longer than I've been on here. And they're not being seen. They're not being recommended. The content that's getting through in the media in general, what is getting published essentially, are the things that, you know, appeal to our base nature or create a thrill, a little scary. I watch true crime. I'm into psychology, so I watch true crime. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the, oh gosh, who are the body language guys? <gasps> Why am I blanking on their name? Anyway, they're awesome. If I remember, I know there's like Greg and Chase. Oh my God, I'm totally blanking. Anyway, they're amazing and I watch them all the time because I just think it's phenomenal. If I remember, I'll put the, their channel in the description box. Not that they need my help, but, but what I'm getting at here is that when you start looking beyond what we've been trained to look at and to stop just accepting whatever's put in front of our faces, there are people out there doing really phenomenal work, whether it's spiritual work, psychological work, um, you know, telling about history. Those are great to learn from as well. Talking about some things that, you know, you never would have realized, or you think you've got this version of history. Uh, uh, was it Bailey Sarian? I watch her all the time too. She's got dark history. She's got that podcast that she does and it's on YouTube as well. Phenomenal. Um, a, a great thing. So, you know, we need to start really paying attention to what's put in front of us and start thinking broader. What it is they're telling me right now is that we all as humans get so overwhelmed by survival that we go into survival mode. 
Now that might have us short circuiting. This is where we start getting into vices. Um, you know, for me, it's food. <laughs> like I shouldn't even laugh. It's sort of a nervous laugh. Like <laughs> I, I have some lime Tostitos over there that got destroyed probably in a matter of, I've had those only about five days. There's probably a third of the bag left. I don't, and it's one of the big bags, but, um, but anyway, <laughs> you know, for me, it's food for some people, you know, pick your vice. I mean, there's so many ways that people try to, um, distract themselves and to make themselves feel soothed and to feel okay being in this world. And it does take away our capacity for compassion. I think I was, it was one of the dailies. I was given the example of, um, the home that I'm living in. There are shorted wires all over this apartment. And I told them, I've told the police, or not the police, the uh, fire station, because it's not just me. This is an apartment complex. This is a danger for everybody. And not only that, there's been excessive disturbance of the peace. I work from home. It's very tough. It's very tough. If you guys have, like, I'm like, oh, I'm all caught up on readings. Yeah, I'll get to them tonight, guys. Their construction workers showed up and there's, you know, jackhammering in the background, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the response I got from management was, what do you want us to do about it? It's not our problem, right? So, uh, again, this whole idea of power struggles, um, there's, they're really trying to shed a light through all these examples that I'm bringing up shed a light on how we view ourselves and one another. And if you're not sure how to break that open, how to get past the numbing, okay, the numbed out viewpoint, you can ask Ariel for help. You can ask Michael for clarity, okay? But what I'm hearing is that when a lot of people try to work with angels and arch, you can work with your guardian angels too, but they try to work with their angels and their archangels, they're trying so hard to either escape avoid, pretend, okay, be delusional, and to be special, that they try to force an experience. And then when nothing is unlocking in their lives, they want to say, well, it's because that doesn't work. It's because so-and-so, I learned that from so-and-so and it was a scam. It's this, that, and the other. But really what it is, is we're not allowing ourselves to move past a pattern. If you are in a space in your life and something is just not working, you keep getting, you know, the same kind of bosses or, you know, the same kind of treatment at work, or you keep getting the same kind of friends or the same kind of love partners. There is a bigger pattern that you're to be looking at. Are you somebody who's domineering and you're constantly um, trying to control people with your words or your actions? Are you codependent? Are you constantly in a, a way where you have to show up for someone else to save them or what have you, and you're burned out. And so now you're reacting and you don't know why you are and you're getting, you probably have certain types of people you've attracted in who are trying to make you feel guilty for not being the version of you that they want you to be, so on and so on, okay? The greed, the greed. I'm thinking for some reason, maybe some artists are watching this, but I'm um, feeling like, you know, people feel like you shouldn't be charging that much for your art or spiritual practice services. I've been told for years I shouldn't charge for anything. I was told that I shouldn't be doing lives where I charge, that I should be doing them for free, that I should be catering more. Um, I actually had someone, while I was visiting my family, I was still working and someone had the audacity to leave a comment under my video, I feel like you're too busy for us. I'm literally off visiting my family and still working. You see what I mean? Like that's toxic. That's toxic. Where it turns my stomach when I see some social media creators say, you know, I, I, I did this and I heard you guys don't like it. So I'm going to stop doing that. So I'm not going to do that for this one because you guys don't like it. And the chances are it was probably a few whiny freaking babies who just want to offset it. A few whiny freaking babies who just wanted to control because they are toxic. And here's somebody going, oh, oh, I'm so afraid of not having your approval. Where does that happen in your life? When you set a boundary with someone and they give you the silent treatment, which is abuse, that is emotional abuse. And they are making it like you have to suck up to them, 
that you owe them an apology and you feel like the only way to get past it is to go ahead and apologize, remember, you don't need their approval. If they're mad, let them be mad. Who cares? Go off and live your life and be happy. Let's pull a couple of cards here. If you do want to be supportive to creators, you can do that by just liking the video. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, giving them a subscribe if you want to see more of their content or, um, you know, because I noticed on YouTube, especially even the people I subscribe to, they don't show up for me anymore. There's uh, whatever. I don't know what's going on there. But, you know, sharing the video, that all helps. Seven of Gabriel, stand up for what you believe in, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Have confidence, claim your personal power. That is exactly what we're talking about here. And it's, it's what we've been saying throughout this entire video. Um, from here on out, if I have any narcissists or, um, you know, cluster B types who are leaving nasty comments and trying to flip the script or be manipulative or whatever, you're just getting the clown emoji. I ain't going to take you down anymore. I'm going to let you be, let you sit in your own filth and you get the clown emoji. I hope you will join me in calling those people out. Don't do it in your one-on-one -on -one relationships with narcissists. That could be very dangerous. But publicly, why not? Okay. <laughs> Again, check with the next part. I don't know if that's the safest thing. Eight of Michael, we're releasing ourselves. You can be free. Make a courageous choice to change your situation. Not seeing things clearly because we might be working towards someone else's expectation. We're working towards what we think we need to be. Now this... Um, you guys know that I'm big into women's issues and I stand for that. 100% I stand for that. And what I will, mm, speaking of, I got something to say about that, but hang on, I'll, I'll come back to that. And also we have a seven and an eight. I'm supposed to point that out. I don't know why, but there you go. We're evolving, I guess. So with women's issues, there's this whole thing where I saw something, I think it was on TikTok or something, where a woman was like, if you want to be a high value woman, you need to take care of yourself. You need to go to the gym. Sometimes people think that for women, taking care of themselves is making sure that they are some sort of supposed idealized body type. Honey, I'm thick, but I'm cute. Don't even try me, okay? Okay? <laughs> but that it has to be one, one body type that you have to have like, I guess, hair extensions and plastic surgery. And, and if you have all that stuff, okay, cool. But I did not like that this one was out there spreading that toxic message. And now I'm gonna go right into the other thing, may as well, cause we're here. There was another thing on TikTok. Yeah, I scroll a little bit too much on that app, I suppose. But anyway, it was on TikTok. And this woman was saying that the fashion industry is trying to go back to the size zero body. There's such a, uh, this like rise in popularity for the 90s that they're trying in the early 2000s that they're trying to bring back that dangerously thin body type. Are you going to allow that? Men, are, are you going to allow us to be treated that way? Stand up. You want to be a real man? That's how you stand up. You stand up and say, no, that's not healthy. No, like we're, we're not all going. And if you're naturally that thin, beautiful. That's gorgeous, beautiful, you be you. But that's as ridiculous as telling you that you should have an hourglass shape and you can't achieve that without surgery. You feel me? We need to stand up. And if you're somebody who's faint of heart, we ain't gonna be friends. No, because I won't put up with that. All right, because <laughs> I don't put up with people who, again, are trying to make themselves out to be victims and, oh, you're too harsh and whatever. Blah. Nine of Raphael, make a wish, dreams become reality, a joyful time of life. This is what is to come if we release all this other stuff. And stand up for what you believe in. Now, if you have a perspective, share it, but make sure you're very respectful in so doing. All right, strength. What are you seeing right now coming out of me? Strength. Do you know how much hate I'm going to get for this video? Do you know how much I want to tell those people off? Do you know how not afraid I am to do that? But children are watching, so we'll spare them the language, okay? It's the 11. Get going in a real way. 
get ascending in a real way. It's not about being fake. And it's not about pretending like things aren't happening. That's BS. Okay. Archangel Ariel strength, strength and grace through kindness, self-confidence and forgiveness. Now, there, there's that word kindness there. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. These decks are from a certain author who no longer makes these decks. I use them because I got them. What? Um, and some of the language is like, I don't, I don't know what the word is. Um, sidestepping? Be kind to everybody. Well, you're going to be a good person, but sometimes you got to say what you got to say. And that's it. Let's get another card over here. With, let's lighten the mood with these cartoonish mermaid cards. <laughs> no, do I have the Magdalene Oracle? I don't. I have the box, but she's not here. Okay, well, all right, back to the mermaids. Let's do this. Where'd they go? Where are all my cards going? Oh, I decanted them. <laughs> like as if they're wine. They're in a basket. I forgot I did that. That's me trying to get organized. And then I do stupid things and then I forget that I did it. All right, healing heart. You're a powerful healer. Keep up the, the great work. I was going to say good work, but this is great. Okay, so there's that. We are healers. You got to be authentic, man. You hear me, man? <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. All right, let's get one more. And then I'm going to share a dream that I had. You may have tuned out by now. I don't care. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> All right, um, what is this? Consult an expert. More information is needed. Contact someone with expertise in this area. So for some of you who are contemplating, you know, something like this feels like contracts. Especially with Mercury retrograde coming up as of the recording of this, you might want to be extra careful with all of that. Now, let me share this dream that I had about someone who's not really, they were a part of my life before, they're no longer a part of my life. I couldn't tell you why. To this very day, it's a mystery to me. But I was thinking about this this morning as these messages were coming up. And it was um, someone that I know who's in a higher status, I suppose, by like ego definition in life um and i walked in and this person was in a dining room that was very ornate heavy dark wood maroon colors like red colors all over and then when i came in i wasn't in form i was like i don't know just an energy and we were communicating but we were doing so telepathically so we weren't speaking and when i walked in the whole room went stark white the only thing you could see was this person sitting there the chair the table and there was a plate in front of this person and like a very sad robot he was like scooping this food up and setting it on the floor and i telepathically said to this person what are you doing why aren't you feeding yourself i'm not hungry what are you doing with the food i'm feeding the dog so i look over and there's no dog there and in this dream i kept saying there's no dog there you don't have to keep feeding it and I kept trying to tell this person, because I could tell that they were very sad, and I kept saying, you don't need to be here. You can come with me. You're safe with me. You can come with me. And he didn't say anything. He just stopped communicating. I felt him distancing himself from me. And then I went ahead and respected that, and I backed away, and the room turned into a, uh, a living room. A living room at this point. Same kind of heavy, dark wood. Um, reds and you know very deep rich colors and I was so heartbroken because I saw someone suffering and they didn't need to suffer I felt compelled to share that with you because I want you to sit with that and let's spare the goofy jokes about ha 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 he was feeding a dog there's nothing funny about that it's symbolism okay what what are we feeding in our lives where are we torturing ourselves and we don't need to where are we making enemies where there are no enemies? Sit with that. I'm going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.